Welcome to PSD to HTML5 and CSS3. This video is called Coding an HTML5 Skeleton. In this video what we're going to be doing is crafting a bare bones HTML document so that we can start adding content and building our website. So let's start by uh, opening our code editor. I'm using Coda2 which is my weapon of choice but you can use any number of code editors out there many of which are free. I recommend for a free option a uh, text wrangler. I included a list of t uh, code editors that you can download in a previous lesson. Uh, but text wrangler is free. It's simple and bare bones and it gets the job done. It doesn't get in the way. You can do any type of code in here and uh, I think it's great. So you can use that to follow along. Uh, if you have your own favorite code editor then you can just follow along with that. So I'm using Coda and I'm going to start by opening our website. I already have mine open here but I'm going to show you how to do this. Open. On my desktop I have my website. I'm going to open that whole folder. and Here it is here. First thing you do is add a new file. You could do that probably a couple of ways. In Coda you can go file new HTML. In, uh, I'm sure it's very similar in other code editors. So we're going to add this new file and call it index.html. So it's our first HTML file. Here's our blank canvas. The first thing you do is add a doc type in HTML. Um, really quick note, HTML5 has the nicest doc type that there is. I know that sounds geeky, but uh, earlier versions of HTML have really complicated and long doc types. Um, and they're, they're absolutely necessary to put in your HTML file. Uh, it allows the browser to understand what it's going to be reading. And HTML has just got a really simple, easy to remember doc type. So put that in there. Let's start by putting our HTML tags. In between your HTML, you put a head tag and a body tag. And close those. Everything within the head is stuff that's rendered by the browser, not stuff that you necessarily see. So in here we're going to put the title of the website and we're going to call it my website. And let's save that. And as uh, remember to save often and always. I make it a habit to save every time I write something new. It might sound anal, but trust me, once your browser or your uh, code editor crashes or your computer crashes and you lose hundreds of lines of HTML or any sort of code, it sucks a lot. So save a lot. Just It doesn't hurt just to hit Command S every time you add a new line. It's, uh, it's a lot better than realizing that you forgot to save. So um, I'm going to save that and I'm going to open that index file in my browser. Let's see what it looks like. Uh, it's empty, which is what it should be, except for up here you can see my website as the title. Uh, and that's because I added this line in the head tag. Um, in the wireframe, you can see here that we have a header with a logo and navigation. Then we have a hero and call to action. For the purposes of this entire course, um, I'm going to consider this entire section the header and not just this being the header this whole section is going to be the header and the logo navigation and hero are all going to be child elements of the entire header section then we have this section here this content it's going to be the left column body content and the sidebar below that we have the secondary call to action and the footer so we're going to get started by adding those elements in our HTML. Let's go into our body and add the header. HTML5 has a tag called header. It's very obvious what it can do, uh, what it's for. You can use it for anything, but obviously for semantics you would use it for a header. Uh, and we're going to use the header tag as the header section of our HTML. Then we have Let's see. Let's then throw inside the header since we said that this 
is our header. Uh, let's just put in for now the hero section. So I'm going to add a div and I'm going to give it the ID of hero. And what I do as uh, and what you should do make a habit out of it is add a comment that's an HTML comment right there at the end of uh, your closing div tag something that has an ID or a name in there uh, it helps you to know what this tag is the end of um, you'll realize as we start coding more HTML how this will benefit you and I'll, I'll point that out um, but it's a good practice to do this because then you can clearly see the relation between this tag and this tag especially when you're gonna have hundreds of lines of HTML in between them so just make a habit out of putting a comment at the end of your div uh, noting what it's uh, the end of uh, okay we'll leave that up next we're gonna put outside of the header um, this whole section here this whole section we're gonna call content so let's add a new div outside of header and let's call it content so give it the idea of content and add a comment here saying it's the end of content there we go and within content we're going to have left column body content. More specifically, I'll show you here in the completed version of the website. Here's the content. Right here, this section right here, we uh, are going to call this the column content because there are three columns here and I just think that that would make sense to call this column content. So let's use an HTML ta uh, five tag called section. You can use div here, but just to take advantage of HTML five uh, for semantics purposes, I can call this a section because it's a section of the website. And let's give this the ID of column content. All right, and let's add a comment here and column content then we can know it's the end of it here you can kind of see what I'm talking about here why this makes sense because I'm gonna start adding a lot more HTML in between this con these content tags and you can see that that's gonna make sense it's gonna help you realize that's where this ends especially when you start getting into uh, error validating and validating your HTML you might see you're missing a closing div tag and you're like I don't know where that div tag is because I didn't add a comment to let you know to let me know where that ends it's it's really hard to see and it could be a pain in the butt later so we have column content and uh, let's see after content let's put I believe the secondary call to action nope let's add the sidebar so here we have the column content and the sidebar so here we go we're gonna take advantage of another HTML5 tag called a side uh, it's pretty obvious we can use that for a sidebar so there's our sidebar or what will be our sidebar then we have the secondary call to action section and that's gonna be outside of the content tag so that's not a part of this that's not a child element of the content it's its, uh, it's its own section or a sibling of the content. Just as a quick note about uh, children and siblings, you can see HTML, you can view it as a family tree. All of, all of these guys are related in some way. So for example, within the body. The body is the main, uh, the main parent of everything. It's the grandparent, the parent. Uh, so for example, of the header, header is a child of body. And you could see here that div with the idea of hero is a child of header, which would mean that div is a grandchild of body. Um, 
content is a sibling of header, which would, you don't necessarily use, you know, if you're using a family tree, you'd say this is the aunt or the uncle, but that's that you don't use that in HTML. So here, uh, these are child elements of content. This aside is a sibling of section. So these guys are related and this is their parent. So what we're going to do now is add uh, the secondary call to action. It's going to be a sibling of content. So we're going to use a div and let's give it the ID of secondary CTA or secondary call to action. Quick note about naming conventions. Uh, you can name anything within an ID. You can name it this if you want, um, but that's going to be hard to read and reference. It's basically just to help you understand what this div is going to be for, and you're going to be using this to reference in CSS later. There are two different things you can name a div. You can use an ID, or you can use a class, or you can use both. Uh, let's call this just for now box. We'll delete that, but just for this example. So an ID, you can only, the ID is specifically for that element. You can't use the same ID for other elements. It's, it's specific and only unique to that element. Um, whereas a class is uh, kind of a global thing you can use for any element. I can I can give this the class of box or I can give this the class of box. Um, so basically I'll, you'll start to understand more once we start getting into CSS. But just understand for now that ID is specific to the element. You cannot use it again. Class, you can use that multiple times uh, on any element uh, you don't need to only use it once. Okay. Let's add a comment to let us know that this is the end of the secondary call to action section. And after the secondary call to action, we have the footer right there. So let's add an HTML ta five tag called footer. Again, nice and semantic header aside footer section. It's nice. Footer. Okay. Let's get rid of some of this space here. All right. And that would be all for the skeleton. So let's just review what we have here. We have the doc type. We have the HTML tags. Everything goes in between these. We have the head. We have the body. And then we have our header. Inside the header, we have our hero. As a sibling of header, we have content right here. Uh, as child elements of content, we have the column content and we have the sidebar or a side. Then we have a sibling of content and header, the secondary call to action. Then we have finally the footer. So that would be our bare bones HTML5 document. In the next video, we're going to start adding content. Uh, so I'll see you there.